Hello, welcome back everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live Day 3 for Lenora Porter's awesome stream. <laughs> she is a designer, she is a coder, she is a community builder. Oh yeah. And this is her third day. Yeah. And so we're gonna be doing some really awesome stuff with an app that we've been working on here in XD. So, hey chat, how are we doing? Welcome back, day three. Thank you <laughs> for anyone who's stuck around all three days and has watched this project evolve. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we went Are through you? went through wireframes, made them beautiful, and now yeah. we get to do a little bit of fun making it work. <laughs> so hello Sam, hello Rob, um, Ariana's a here in the house, Munir, Tim, everyone's here. <laughs> All right, how are you feeling? I'm Day feeling three. good. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. This is well. This stuff is now we're getting into coding. This is your yeah, this is your bread and butter right baby. here. It's my baby. We're really gonna see <laughs> see you flex some muscles today, and I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm really hoping everyone had a chance to check out the uh, XD Creative Challenge today, or the Daily Creative Challenge specifically in XD. Um, today it's day three. We're talking all about auto animate. Yesterday was all about components. The day before was repeat grid. We're we're doing some basics, yep. but in a fun way because Jesse has been awesome given us these uh, these challenges. Um, can't wait to see the auto automate. So remember, you guys, it's okay. It's okay to not have it perfect. Yep. Just submit it and we'll <laughs> check it out. Awesome, and in about 30 minutes, we're gonna be uh, chatting to win for some sticker mule stickers, about 100, I believe, are up for grabs. So stick around, it's gonna be fun. And Lenora, what are we doing today? So we will be going through, first of all, the design system that we created via XD and how we could translate that into code, but also in a non-code kind of way. Mm -hmm. I'm using a special thing that I would like to keep until then. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm so <laughs> excited. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any t any tips? Are you going to give us any tips for any designers who are thinking about dipping their feet into code? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like full-blown awesome. tutorials. It's going to be one resources. of those streams, you guys. Yeah. It's going to be some practical, practical use cases. Today. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So yesterday, um, as I like look through everything, um, I decided to jump into Illustrator just to make some more mascots. Because remember, we had a few, um, but I felt like, you know, we can add some more flair to this. So I kind of created this little um, animation kind of thing oh, going so on. Oh, so cute. Yeah, where there's basically you start off with nothing, um, then a little sprout comes up, and you know, a bigger leaf, and then boom, I'm happy. I am a full-blown plant that's healthy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I created this little thing just to see how I could animate this, and once you get into the cards and the steps, you can kind of see how everything kind of flows out. Um, but yeah, I want to show you before Maybe we, we can walk through, walk through yeah. just as is, because maybe some people are newer to the, three, oh, yeah, the yeah. third day, maybe yeah. haven't seen the other two. Cool. Um, Cause it's a pretty cool app. I really yeah, love it. We cute. were talking a lot about plants for the last three days. Yeah, <laughs> it's making it's inspired me to maybe like pick up a plant afterwards. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I started off with like a splash screen, and this splash screen is just basically um, a screen that shows a little animation, and it shows how um, the actual app will start. So as you go through and you um, open up the application. The first step is a little quiz that would ask you, you know, what brings you to Sprout? Um, are you a new plant parent? Are you, like, do you just need a reminder about your plants to water them, to prune them, to cut the leaves? Do you just need reminders? Um, do you need help? Is your plant dying right now um, and you need something immediate? Um, or are you an aspiring plant parent, someone who wants a plant, doesn't really know too much about plants, but thinks maybe this would be a good opportunity and I could probably learn using the app. Um, so yeah, I kind of created this little questionnaire for the user, and as soon as you click on, um, you know, I'm a new parent, you get this little cute yeah. little um, screen here that says, welcome to plant parenthood. <laughs> and you so have a little sweet. newborn right here, a little plant, and um, yeah, it'll ask you to access your camera. Mm -hmm. And then from there, remember that was like a prim prim uh, primer set, um, well, step, letting you know, you know, hey, something's about to come up. You may get a 
um, native notification that pops up, but right now we're letting you know we're about to access your camera. Is that okay? Yeah, we had a um, good discussion around onboarding in general. Yeah. Because really that's kind of what we got to dive into with these exactly. with these screens and kind of why you got to why you chose uh, the progress bar and why you know maybe yeah. your cards cards mm -hmm. would be more interesting and um, yeah the onboarding onboarding is so oh, yeah. rich with yeah. with pitfalls and triumphs. Yeah. Um, but it is. I think it's like the first thing you learn, right? Oh, it's yeah. UX, right? It's the first thing I feel like you master or I still feel like I'm mastering. Yeah, I'm right. definitely still mastering because I'm looking at this screen now and I'm noticing something. Now, if the chat can tell me what's left off of the screen, the one that we're on here, um, yeah, maybe you'll be awesome. She'll, <laughs> she'll send you a plant. I'll send you a plant. <laughs> so if chat can figure out what's wrong with this screen, yeah. <laughs> what she forgot. Something um, I forgot here. Okay. We'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back. back. To that. Um, so yeah, once you click on the actual camera, the camera, native camera will come up. You can take your photo. Here's my little plant here. And boom, you get to the screen saying, hey, we have, we've identified your plant, um, put in the plant name, and um, you can either add another or you could press next to get to the next step. Marissa said next button. No. Not the next button. But you're close. So close. Very close. So close. Yeah. Do you know what I'm... Yeah, I just want the okay, chat Okay, okay, perfect. Because I'm like, I think you know, because just based on how you say it, it's close, I'm like, oh, you it's know close. what I'm talking it's about. It's close, it's <laughs> close. Talking about progression yeah. of these screens. Yeah. Very exciting, though. Yeah. Um, so once you're here. Wow, some new, newer screens coming up. Yeah. Or some, you know, finalized mm -hmm. versions of these screens. Yeah, you all didn't see this yesterday. Um, we didn't get to this step, but yeah. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and save your account. This person's name is Cassandra. We're asking for her email next. Um, and then you can press the done button. And then boom, you're here on the actual dashboard or homepage. Um, and it shows your plans. It shows like a little five minute session that you can take to learn how to prune your, um, prune your palm that you have. It has a little task that you can do and a little tip for the day. I didn't add anything down here because I'm like, what else should I add here? Mm, I don't know, I'll let the chat tell me. But um, yeah, I thought this would be a perfect way of just setting up the screen and leaving some room for more. Back and next button. Oh, there Back you go. Back and next button. There we go. Yeah, so. Marissa brings up a good idea. Um, ability to not take a photo. Mm-hmm. So that's basically what I was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's no way to say, no, I know you do not have access to the right. camera. Um, or just go back like, no, that, you know, is it, that's not okay for me. I don't, I don't give you permission to do that. Right. We're basically forcing them to give us permission, which is not good. That's not good user experience. Um, that's not, I, to me, that's just not, um, how do I call it? Yeah, uh, people call it um, dark UI. Yeah, exactly. When you when you really give the user no choice but to do an action. Yeah. Right. You see them a lot in pop ups. Yeah. Right. You don't you don't see the X button. The X button isn't designed in a way that you can see it. Yeah. Or the cancel button, and uh, you kind of your only choice is to sign up. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a dark dark UI. Yeah. This is. Um, I'm already creating dark patterns here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that was a good catch. Well, that's not what this is. This yeah. is very different. Yeah. We'll just you'll just add it yeah, in later. Yeah, it's a little plant. I mean, it's not really dark. Everyone's happy. <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely add in your either, you know, I'm not allowing you button or, I mean, I wouldn't say a back button, maybe, maybe more so of a no or you do not have access right. or something. Or skip. Perhaps. Yeah, or skip. skip. Yeah, skip. I or like add skip. later, add photo yeah. later. Is a yeah. Sometimes people don't want to do this. Really, yeah. the onboarding states are, I feel like people could talk at length about them oh forever. Oh my gosh, yeah. I still haven't hit done an onboarding where I'm like, this is great. I know, especially I your first this. round. No, no yeah. one's ever said that about an onboarding, yeah. ever. <laughs> no. Things so people have never said, I love onboarding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, how I ended it. There's a few more screens that I have in um, wireframe mode that still, like, look very good. So all I got to do is really change up some of the photos and change, um, colors, but everything's there. I just feel as though this will be a quick change and I can even give you all this file and you could change it however you want. Mm -hmm. um, you said, oh my God, the plant name. <laughs> the plant's name is Pamela Curry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how I started creating some of the screens and I decided to switch gears once I got here. Cause I'm like, okay, everything's basically here. 
it's time for some design systems, some kind of like solid systems where I can just continue reusing different components and not recreating it every time. Right. To create some consistency, because right now, well before, there was no consistency. I kept recreating the back button and the next button and whatever button. Um, I'm sure there were different sizes and different mm -hmm. colors mm -hmm. and nothing standard. So I moved on here and started like creating out the actual, um, what is what is this called? More the um, the text and the font. You already saw the colors and everything like that. Went to the buttons, and this is my favorite part. These states. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Tell this was such states. a lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I I started creating out the components. It's easy to just you know flip certain things on and off. Mm -hmm. So you have your different buttons there, um, which I probably need to fix some more, but. You have your different error states, your disabled, yeah, your you know tertiary tertiary um, button. You have your error, you have your info, you have your warning. Everything's there, and I'm like, okay, this will be solid for you know this screen here. Which let's go back to it. When we created this actual card component, which is a, you know our quiz. Mm -hmm. So as I started creating it, all I gotta do is double click here. Um, and grab this particular component. Let's say I just want to go right back to the default state. I can press the default state and it goes right back to it. the default state. My and gosh. I'm like, oh my god, this such this definitely saves so much time. Um, so when I'm going through, I can just quickly change things to the active state. I can change the button. Let's say you know we want to disable this button. I can go right here to disable. Wow. Disable button. Great. Um, so this is the power of design systems. Like you could literally recreate the screen in a matter of minutes. Let me show you. So <laughs> let's recreate the screen. So I could um, go ahead, I can just copy this one and just delete everything out. All right, so now we have this solid screen. I'm gonna keep the status bar up because we're gonna need it. Um, but yeah, you could go over to your components. I have mine all decked out. I have all my mascots here. They're probably not in order, but all my icons are there. I can pull in any icon that I need. I can go into, yeah, here's the mascots and everything. So what I'm looking for is this actual progress bar up here. And I called it, I believe I called it progress bar with stepper here, yeah. So progress with stepper, I can pull that on in right here. Boom. And we're already done. Step one, done. <laughs> you so, know how long it took you to do that? Yeah, so <laughs> yes. you, did, you did all the legwork the past. So this, <laughs> this stream is you just like cruising through yeah. and just like things happening so fast because she did all the legwork. Yeah. All the thought design and all the idea generation for the first stream. Yeah. Second stream was like getting these, getting these colors on point, getting these alignments, spacing correct, yep. picking that font, creating that component, like the one sh she just pulled over. And yep. now it's just easy. Click and drag and, and so drop. now when you're like making like t ten different yeah. variations of whatever the screen is going to be, that you can show your client mm -hmm. or you can show your um, team. Yeah, you can do that fast. You can iterate very quickly once you have these components to put exactly. together. Yeah, um, and from here I can just go ahead and change all the text. So I'm just going to grab the text from here because uh, that's just easier. Let me double click in there, get the text, um, come right on in here, done. Oh my God. Done. You can go here, do the same. Uh oh. There. And done with that. If only there was a simple workaround with text. Not text blocks, not spacing of text, but like actually the actual copy. Yeah. I would love some, if anyone has any great like plugins to help with like mm. writing copy or. You're just like, yeah. you know, I feel like a lot of the struggles left with XD have to, are all around copy. Um, yes. And it's, you know, it takes a while. You, you yeah. know, you sat there yesterday kind of being like, hey, what should this say? Wish, yeah. Um, I, sure I, wonder, I wish there was a kind of some yeah. resources or guides to that, right? I mean, some only... like common phrases, like, yeah. or, uh, you know, when you're, when you're creating like a next button, yeah. you know, like what are some to do's about exactly. around like how to make these, what these buttons should say. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just thinking. Just thinking of things for XD. Yeah. You know, what are some what are some pitfalls? Yeah. And you're right, I am missing the home button. Um, which is just quick drag from the design system. So we can either grab that right now too. That is here. Let's open that up. Thank you for pointing that out. We can go right into our Apple design system here. 
Nice, good find, Richard. Yeah. And we can pull this one. Can I pull that one? Oh, it's locked. Of course. <laughs> Let me actually go to all ears. Right. Can I open this? Oh, home indicator here. Boom. And then we can go right back over, paste it in, and pull it away to the bottom. Boom. Done. To Love it. Cool. I mean, even with that, that's a quick component that's already built. I don't have to recreate the wheel with that. And now it's right in my component library over here. So in case I want to pull it somewhere else, like let's say I want to pull it here, I can do that. Um, I have to recreate that. So fast. So yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, even with this, I can go into this um, component here. This is a repeat grid here. Um, but if I place in or if I turn this to active now, it's gonna turn all of them into active, and I don't wanna do that. So what I usually do from here is just turn off my repeat grid, because I don't need it exactly for this. Um, and there might be better ways to do this. And then I go right into the button, change it, it um, change it. Yeah, that's the um, way to do it. Yeah, now I don't know why this is stuck out, but that'll be a clean fix. I'm sure something's wrong, that I masked it wrong or whatever. Um, but yeah, but that's how you basically do it. You can go down here into your default button and change that as well. Um, change it to maybe the primary color, mm -hmm. which I've also messed up, which is fine. <laughs> that's one thing that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Still show your work no matter if it's all the way done or halfway done, still show it. Yep. Push it up. Yep. Just send um, it up. Yeah, because you can always fix it, change it, update it as time goes on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. It's all, it's, your process is so important, not just yeah. for yourself, but also for other people to see. Yeah, so exactly. Much of, so much of coding, I'm sure, is the same oh way. It's like, it's, yeah, I was, I did this, but it took me yeah. 10 minutes to do this three lines. Exactly. And uh, you're, yeah, same with design, right? It took me yeah. 10 minutes to like arrange this button. Yeah, So exactly. the, the workflow, it doesn't, you don't, you're not left with a lot after yeah. a, a, a X amount of time. So yeah. it's important to just show what you have yep. Tell them what you did, tell them your pitfalls. Exactly, totally agree. So I did create like a little animation here um, just to get started with a splash page. And then I want to go into more of the how to make the um, cards animate, which will be so fun. Let me show you how I did this piece. So you can kind of see the plant growing and boom, now you got a plant, boom, now you're on <laughs> to the actual um, you know, quiz here. I didn't go any further than that, but that's basically how you can start prototyping out your application. Um, and I used, let's go back out to, uh-oh, not here. Let's go here. And you can go into like prototype mode and like literally see how I just spelled it out, which is simple. Mm -hmm. um, I went to this page here. Are you I using made, auto animate for that? Yes, I mm -hmm. am. Yeah. Um, I made sure to click on this little icon here to make this my home page or my home screen. Let me make mm -hmm. it a little bit bigger so you can see. Um, so it's a timer plus auto animate. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I went to our triggers here and I was thinking of like maybe tapping it, but I'm like, no, no, no. I wanted <laughs> to go automatically. So mm -hmm. I, you know, chose time and then I chose auto animate. And as things go, I just kind of like put my little arrow right here to the screen. Um, yeah, I won't yeah. do that just again. Just drag but, it over. <laughs> yeah, just drag it right over. And um, yeah, yeah, I chose my. It's such a great, in. simple. And then you can you can essentially, it's almost like a prototype space for animations. Yeah. I know it's a prototyping tool and we're <laughs> doing animations, but also for animations. Something like this would take how long in After Effects? Oh my gosh. You know? So, so long. <laughs> and, and we get, we understand, we just want to see it for what it could be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and then later on, you know, you have some, oh, yeah. around, some illustrators, some animators do some work for you, but to yeah. show proof, yep. this is a great tool. Mm -hmm. So fast. Yeah. And all you have to do is like have a little sprout come out yeah. of this little guy. That's all I wanted. <laughs> But yeah, um, and I did see like an awesome tutorial on how to make the cards animate. Mm -hmm. And I wanna show you that, because um, that can possibly, you know, be something helpful. So if you go to learnxd.com, do, 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 not here. Let's um, XD or Let's learn, XD? Let's XD. Yeah, I was like, Learn right. XD, what's that one? Oh. Let's XD. We yeah, know Let's, let's XD. XD.com over here. It's yeah. Our, it's my favorite thing to plug on the stream. <laughs> 
if you go to, there's like an actual card um, tutorial that I saw. Or did I just see that on YouTube? I have on YouTube. I probably saw it on YouTube. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, there, there's so many other. Generally, this is yeah, where you go for that type of information. Definitely. Great plug. Yeah, so um, usually when I go through here, like the way I learn state is with this one. And you can actually download the file, um, which is great because all I needed to do is figure out how to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So I download a file. Oh, that's easy. I'm going to just repeat this and, um, you know, recreate it. So yeah, if you ever need help with creating yeah. your animations and your design system. For XD, this, this is the right place one. to go for sure. Yeah. For sure. And once you get an example up, yeah, because it's so easy to use, right? So it's sometimes it's inspiring to see how other people have used it. Yeah, um, and just like this one, yeah. it's a card. Maybe there's a tutorial that you saw. You're like, how can I do that? It's yeah. You're gonna find so much help in these in this website. Exactly. And maybe maybe we'll get into more. Maybe I'll get some prototyping in for you. And maybe do the cards alongside you uh, a little yeah. bit later. So maybe while Olinor's coding, maybe yeah. I'll I'll jump into XD and do some yes. prototyping. That would be awesome. Stick around. <laughs> That's coming later. So, yeah. So let me show you the actual like system of how I created some of these icons as well. So all these icons, of course, are all in our component library. So everything's here. Um, so I just pulled that out. Um, also pulled in our characters. And this one's a little sad, a little sick, whatever. Oh. A little sad. It's OK. Um, but yeah, we have all these little characters in here. We have our form fields and how they'll work. Um, we have our active state. We have our default state. We have everything in there for the forms. Um, and then I kind of like figured out, I just pulled these in. I'm like, what, what have I grouped over and over and over? Mm. If I've grouped them more than three times, that means that's a, that's a component. Stop grouping them, create a component. <laughs> so I went around everywhere where I kept creating. That's the quote. That's the quote of the day. That is like, definitely. Stop, gr stop grouping them, make a component. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fair. Yeah. So I went around and just grabbed everything that I just saw in a group. And I'm like, okay, let me put this all here in the molecule section. Because uh -huh. our molecules are usually our area where, you know, different atom pieces are grouped together. You're kind of like starting a puzzle piece. Um, but they're more smaller um, scale puzzle pieces. So like even our, um, let me put a little black background in the back of this so you can actually see. You're in prototyping mode. Oh, that is true. Let me put a little background so you can see this piece. Oh, I'm making squares and all type of stuff, okay. All right, let's push this back. Know why this never works for me? Send to that. Too. Yeah. Boom. So you can see. So just like the groupings of what you've been creating, you've. I like. I like how you're describing them as molecules, right? Yeah. I like. We we talked a little bit about that type of design system layout. Um, yeah. Starting with something small like a color and maybe yeah. like the line weight and maybe an icon and like building on top of it. So now it's exactly. like this essential piece that's going to live somewhere on your app all yeah. the time. Um, yeah. And the fun thing I like about yeah, this so is, dope. It's pretty dope. yeah, if I go to, where is it, here, if I go into our actual stepper and I can say like highlight on canvas, it shows me where it is. Oh, I love that yeah. feature. Wait, yeah. Oh my gosh. You should zoom out and show that feature yeah, on the Yeah, this app. one, let's do that. So say you're working on a lot of screens, yeah. as we all are, and you want to know where one of your components <laughs> lives. Maybe you're like, when did I make that? And you're cleaning up, maybe you're cleaning up your asset library. Yeah. When did I make that? Is it even being used? Is it even <laughs> being used? Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's a great feature where you can actually highlight on the canvas where yeah. this component is being used. So I you can double that, check. Sometimes you make a component and you never use it again. Oh my gosh. Which, and I saw that. It's kind of told me, oh, um, you never use this. Are you going to delete it? <laughs> It was one that I had oh, a while back, and it said, "Hey, um, you've never used this. Do you still want it?" What a what an application! Yeah, Learning, <laughs> reminding us that we are, you know, making stuff and forgetting about it. Exactly. Yeah, all the way down I'm to sure text. Here, have, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I have some up here. I don't think I have this one. I probably have more of that one. Oh, 
I guess I didn't put it in here oh, yet. Oh man, the very last chat to win is coming up in about four minutes. Very last for Lenora stream. Oh. Not forever. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything you want the chat to chat about for the chat to win? Hmm, let's think. I want to know who's been able to actually implement some of their own design systems. Even if it's small, even if it's just colors, even if it's just type, what have you implemented within the last few days? I love that. Okay. Think yeah. about it. Think about it, chat. Don't chat about it just yet. Just think about it. Yeah. Oh, and see what forms on there as well. So yeah. when you're making a design system, um, when do you, or where did you, maybe this is a better question, where did you come understand how to um, organize your design system yeah. like this? So it's very thorough, right? A lot of people's design systems are usually like a page, maybe yeah. one artboard, maybe two. Yours is, you've broken it down into very specific chunks. Maybe you could tell us why, yeah. why, you, why you organize like that. Yeah, so um, usually when I'm creating design systems, I kind of think of it from, well, there's two books that I read. There is Laying Out the Foundations that I really, really like. I forgot who actually created that book, but it's called Laying Out the Foundations. And then um, Brad, Fo Brad Frost's book called um, Atomic Design. And mm -hmm. he literally showed you how to like structure out your design system. Right. So that's kind of where I was labeling most of these things as, um, you know, if I go up here, this one's atoms, this one's molecules, this one's organisms, and this one's like, um, well, this one's supposed to be templates. And from here, this one kind of like guides you through how your actual page is gonna be laid out. Mm -hmm. So this basically would look like these, with mm. all the actual layout. Right. Um, so you can actually take the entire quiz and just plop it in to, mm -hmm. um, at our board. I didn't, of course I didn't get there cause I'm like, oh, I mean, it's already there. I don't have to like recreate that again. Um, but yeah, I just felt as though with this actual layout, you start off with the smallest, smallest piece which is usually just the text. From there, you can go ahead and like change up things from there. So like with me, I kind of like started here with our colors. I think you all saw me start with the colors yesterday. Start with the colors. Once I got my colors down, I went to the actual um, fonts and I just started playing with different things and like trying out different fonts. And now I remember why most of them are not showing up. I changed a lot of my font weights mm. to match. Yeah, to match my um, previous design. I see because um, I wanted that friendlier feel. Mm -hmm. So most of these are just like regular. They're the regular weight. And I'm like, no, 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 I really want it to be more bolder for the onboarding. Um, but for everything else. For everything else you've brought yeah. it down. So I over, I've overwritten <laughs> a lot of the elements for just onboarding. Um, because I just felt like that could be a little different based on the feel that we were going for. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing, you know, just with the onboarding and kind of this initial screen, how thorough your design system can be. Yeah. I've I have not seen a, a system so so thorough. Yeah. For for this amount of screens. Yeah, um, but no. and I think it's it, yeah. Do you think it has to do with your developer mentality? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, if I'm developing this, the very first thing I'll do is definitely create all the fonts and the colors first. Mm -hmm. And I usually use SAS for that. And then after that, what I'll do is look at what's the containers in the repeat containers. And right now they're cards. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need a card. Right. Um, and then when it comes to actual layout, I'm like, okay, what kind of grid system is this? Oh, this has you know this amount of pixels. Okay, so when I'm th thinking about the card, I'm gonna always add 20 pixels right. to the left and the right of every card. Um, because that's the structure. Right. So just trying to keep things contained and keep things um, consistent across every screen is like one of my main priorities. It's a huge priority because, creating. yeah, because you're you're looking at it from a standpoint of how am I going to build this later? Yeah. And that's what makes yeah. you so thorough while you're designing. Yeah. I've noticed that in your designs. Yeah. You're definitely, you're thinking long term yeah. with everything. Um, yeah. Chetwin is now happening. It is here. <laughs> Guys, let's chat about design systems and what are some ways that you've been able to implement design systems into your own work? Maybe yeah. into your a larger office space, maybe on your design team. Chat about design systems and what you've been able to implement and we'll see you in a bit. Great.
All right, chat. Are you chatting? Because you could win. 100 stickers. What would you do with 100 stickers? <laughs> I would probably put them on water bottles. Because I don't like them on my Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, we're purists. I like we're purists this. here, yes. <laughs> yes. Everyone chat. Everyone, let's talk about, let's talk about how you've implemented. I feel like for me, once I got, um, once I really got down, my favorite thing to put is actually not something that's really hard to design. It's it's actually really hard to design. It's a tone and feel. Mm, okay. I feel like something that really is hard to capture when you're creating yeah. an app of really a lot a larger app is to maintain tone and feel mm. throughout the um, the copy. And oh, Kuta won! Congratulations! Oh, ooh. Congrats! Right. Hundred sticker wheel stickers are yours. <laughs> put them on your water bottle, not your laptop, or maybe put them on your laptop. Yeah, it's fine. I won't judge you. No judgments. <laughs> Everyone else, Adobe Live 20 is your key to 10 stickers for a dollar. Everyone has won. We are all winners. We're winners for just being here. Yep. I'm proud of us. <laughs> what kind of stickers are we talking about? What kind of stickers are you talking about, Justine? And Eduardo's laptop needs stickers. All right. I won't judge you. It's okay. No, no judgments for the <laughs> stickers on the laptops. I just uh, just go through. Oh my god! I've gone through a lot of laptops, yeah. and you know, I, you know what I think it is? I'm yeah. sad to see stickers go. I know. I'm like, I loved that sticker on that laptop. Yeah. Oh, I gotta. Okay. It's you gone. know, there's a person on um, Instagram. I think her name is Digital Empress. Yeah, that's her name. She has um, these like clear. Um, I guess computer covers mm -hmm. that she puts on, and then she puts the stickers on there. Oh, there you go. So whenever she gets a new computer, all she gotta do is that's like the person that keeps the, the <laughs> sticky part of the screen on their yeah. on their electronic <laughs> device for as long as they can, <laughs> every time. Yeah. And then that is the thing that gets yeah. scratched, and then they peel it off, and it's yeah. good for you guys. Whoever does that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I um, laid everything out. So. We can definitely go on and on. We can create more components. We could lay things out a lot better than I did. Um, but to me, I felt like these were some of the standard things that we were using over and over. This is like a header that I pulled out because I'm like, we're definitely gonna need this header again. Um, this is our um, lessons header that will tell you how to water your plant or how to um, prune your cactus or whatever, um, or how to propagate your your ivy plant or yeah. whatever. Um, and here's like one of your actual learning, um, another learning navigation that kind of lets you know how many points you have and that you're still mm. an apprentice, you're still not there yet, and it has a little progress bar to let you know you're almost done with this lesson. Um, here's our draw that we pull up, that I pulled in. So many different pieces. So like most of it is like navigation and different active states or different states of the navigation. Mm -hmm. This one is just has a little settings button. Right, and this right. one doesn't, you know, whatever. So, so what would you do from here in terms of mm -hmm. having your design system now fleshed out, yeah. maybe a couple of screens designed? What is your, what's your next step usually? So usually what I'll do is I'll publish it. Um, and start documenting why I chose certain things. Okay. Love so then that. we go to like the HIG or Human Interface Guideline, uh -huh. where you explain, you know, this is how many, um, this is how we usually do things. So we always have 20 pixels to the left, and this is why we have 20 pixels to the left, and this is why we use this font because it evokes whatever meaning. And then, you know, we can have different reasons behind um, some of our interactions. So, like, even with the company I work for now, you know, we had to come up with reasons of why we use a modal versus a panel mm -hmm. versus a slide panel. And most of our modals were for like confirmations and um, deleting actions. Mm -hmm. And then our panels were more for configurations. So we had to kind of like document that because usually when developers create our screens, they're deciding <laughs> whether right. to use a modal or a um, slide panel. And a lot of times they don't get it right. So it's like, oh no, we didn't really want the modal there. That really was mm. a panel, but if there's no documentation on why or when to choose what, I see. Yes, yeah, then, yeah. It's, that, and then it, then it just who knows? It's yeah. all out the window. Yeah. So right now, so even even not even with your projects necessarily being completed, now is the time to start documenting yeah. those interactions. What you want places, things to how they want. How you want things to work, yeah. but also why. Yeah. So the why piece is the also why. super interesting. I feel yeah. like people don't do a lot. Yeah. 
And then that final mm. piece after the Y is the code snippet. Ah. Yeah, and the reason behind the code snippet is very important. Sometimes, if you look at this right now, and let's say I'm not, I'm just using XD and I send over this file, there's no like red lining, so I don't know how much padding I'll need. So a lot of people just eyeball it. And mm. you know, that becomes a problem. <laughs> no eyeballing. We don't no like eyeballing. we don't like all eyeballing don't do that. it. No. Um so but that's uh, one of the bigger things to take away from your streams is <laughs> no. If there is a way we're supposed to be doing this, we're gonna do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So usually, you know, on my team, most of the designers, all of the designers know how to code, mm. which is amazing. Wow. All of them. That's so amazing. they can get into the actual HIG and create the component that we're looking for just with pure HTML and CSS. No, it doesn't work. If you click on something, it may not function, but it looks the way we want it. So all the developers have to do is hook it up at that point. Wow. Which is easy to me. Well, easy for them because, I mean, that's what they do. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So usually, like I said before, I would switch over to actually documenting it. So let's move on to that. Are you ready for this? I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm taking it all in. Yes, I am so ready. Awesome. So I'm going to show this. Whew. So with um, my team, we use Ember. Now, Ember is an amazing system to use when it comes to developing out your actual design system. However, I do want to make sure to mention Storybook because Storybook is something that we use to document things. Mm. So whenever a developer creates a component, it literally shoots right up to the Storybook. And now you can see the component a part of your library. Now if I show you how it usually looks, um, we can go here. Okay, so let's say you know, you're a developer mm -hmm. and you create this little swatch in your code it'll come right here to the screen. I'm like, oh yeah, that is definitely not the color I chose as a designer. I could like look through all the components that the developer has. I see, I so, see. So you know when you usually, when you have engineers on your team, their code is just their code. You don't really know what their code looks like. Right. You don't have any visuals. And when it comes back to you, you're eyeballing it also. Yeah. You're kind of like, it kind of is close. Yeah, and it's but like. Am I going to take my eyedropper? Am I going to get this on my screen, <laughs> yeah. take my eyedropper, figure out if that is the right one? Exactly. And the only way you'll know mm. is in the actual production code, and that's already too late. Wow. So it's already too late. It's when too late. Something. So this is, so this is coming at it for me like, so just like XD has a way to kind of XD, it's almost like it's almost like the developers like collaboration tool yes. back to the designer. To, yeah, not exactly. So there's so many from designer <laughs> to developer. Yes. So many tools yeah. like that. So this is the opposite. Yes, which is amazing. And the reason why I brought Storybook up is because they have that tool. Um, Storybook is more for React though. Got it. And it's not really set up for Ember yet. So I'm like, oh, I wish I could have shown you how to build out the design system Ember, but it'll almost I'm gonna say. It won't be pointless, but this will be a better way because Storybook already has a layout. It has everything already built in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have all your colors. As soon as they push it to GitHub, it shows up here. So theoretically, question. Mm -hmm. So the design system the developer has should how uh, should mimic the design system that you have. Yes, to the if, T. To the T. Yeah. This is interesting. Can a designer get into a space like um, Storybook and actually like? edit and do so things for them. So they may not be able to edit if they have the repository information, mm. they can go right out, you know, I right see. in and change it. Um, but you can't edit from this screen. Got it. This is just a view layer. Got it. Um, but if you're kind of like the designers that I know, <laughs> that's on my team, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's not right, I'll change it myself. And they'll right. go right into the code, mm, change it, mm. and then it pulls up here on the view layer. This brings up a good topic that I, I think <laughs> I see a lot in the comments is, does a designer need to know how to code? <laughs> Depending on your team. And it really just depends. Yeah, wow. my team is we create for developers. Like our entire, we work for Heroku, so um, Heroku is a development platform. It's for developers. So our main, our main focus is developers. Mm. So as a designer, you need to understand the developer and right. you kind of have to be a developer to understand the developer. Makes sense. So it just kind of depends on your team. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Yeah. But um, very um, cool. This is awesome. Yeah, so I brought this up because Storybook has a um, very thorough tutorial on building out a mock design system. Wow. And to me, I just felt like 
if anyone ever wants to learn how to set one up, um, this tutorial can like literally help them set it up. And if you go down to like the workflow area, uh, workflow area mm. it shows you like, here's your local host and here's all your different components and here's how to set it up. Um, I started setting mine up. It only has avatars in it, so I won't show you that. <laughs> but um, this is more of the code way of doing it. Um, I wanted to also show you, oh, I can't code as much as I try to learn. Perfect, okay. Oh, is there a storybook plugin for XD? I'm not sure. I can look, I can look. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a great question. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Developers on XD, are there some that you've like go to and you're like tried and true? There's ways to pull in like the design tokens that are generated from storybook. So a lot of times, I'm not sure if XD has like a um, design token plugin, because if so, then you could like literally go right into Storybook and um, hook up all those design tokens and mm. then you can see the changes right into XD right. at that point. Um, whatever the developer makes, you can see it right. you know, on your screens. So yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't used any of those yet. Right. But there are some, there are some overlaps in, um, yeah. in different, um, this is, you know, this, this is Storybook. This is what your team uses. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so different teams use different platforms yeah. to store this type of information. And maybe yeah. there's something that has been brought into XD and, and as yeah. a plugin, but oh, yeah, I'm maybe sure. not Storybook just yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I know a lot of people are saying, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to code. I don't know how to code. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And that's a, another reason why I decided to bring up a different way to make the same, um, you know, the same kind of structure, however, using a low to no code kind of way. And that's probably what I'm gonna work on the most today. Yeah, I would love that. Um, just so everyone can feel at ease. You don't have to feel like you have to know how to code because you don't. Um, but Webflow is an amazing way mm. of doing that. Snaps for Webflow. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna head on over here. Um, we can take all these off because I'm sure if there's any engineers in the room, then you all can dive more into Storybook. <laughs> but for us designers, <laughs> like me, <laughs> I love Workflow because to me, anyone can jump in it and put up a design system. So I did do a few things already and I have our colors in there. Mm -hmm. um, here's all of our colors. You could add in all the rest of your stuff. So you can like have your typography, which I've already created as well. Um, and here's like, your H1s, your H2s, your H3s, all the things that I created already in XD. So from here, let me show you the actual, um, what is it called? The library I created. So boom, we're here. So here's Webflow. I won't spend much time because I know we need to like show you more about XD, but I think this is an amazing way to kind of like, as a designer, lay out your screens. Right. It's a it's um, a gentle way to dip your toes into coding if yeah. you are Very a little gentle. afraid. But um, this yeah. is straight from a from a developer herself. She's yeah. giving us a little bit of a um, she's holding our hands. Yeah. How about that? She's holding your hands. So if anyone's yes. a little nervous, you know, feeling like I do need some essential knowledge, yeah. but I don't want to rack my brain over no. it and don't want to do a bunch of tutorials, but you know, maybe this we want to do something that's a little more focused on design. Yeah, this is a great um, kind of like little yeah. little tutorial. Yeah, and it, to me, it feels like a design tool because if you go right into mm. your um, your div here, which is just a box, you have all your colors. Um, they also have like a little mini design system. So if you can look here, they have all their color swatches in there. You can like switch to different grays if you want. You can see it's updating right as you're clicking through. Right. Um, so at this point, you could like actually create all your grays and create all your different colors. You can just put in your hex code. You can put in your um, different RGBA or HSB, anything that's um, that you've created. You could literally just plot right into um, Webflow. And it to me, it still feels like a design tool. You're not really coding. Um, it's more of a drag and drop kind of feel. And if you even go to like their resources page, um, Webflow resources, um, and you can also go to Webflow design systems template. They have so many different people that contribute to the open source community. And let's pull up some here. So you have, this is the one I grabbed. Mm -hmm. You can easily just clone it 
pull it down, start changing up your colors, pick your own theme and create your own design system just using his template. You don't have to like actually create a look and everything. Um, this guy as well, he up. That's up really cool. So you one. can have like a little like, um, yeah, uh, template of sorts. Exactly. I know a lot of designers actually who design in XD and also use Webflow. Like I know a couple. Um, yeah. yeah, Dave says I love Webflow. Yeah, no access to good courses. We're killing for for real. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, Design Code has a lot of good Design Code. Yeah, there you go. A lot of good um, Webflow tutorials. Um, there's a few that even Webflow has. Like you can go to Learn and Support. Um, Webflow University tab, and literally they have all these things in there. Um, I think they also have design systems in there too. Um, but anyway, yeah, cool. they have some stuff. Well, this is the straight, you know, straight from the developer. Yeah. Let us know which are preferred. Um, you know, probably medium level development, you know, web development tool yeah. for a user who's also a designer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so we could go in here and try to recreate maybe our nav or try to recreate one of our, um, you said, what's the link? Oh, uh, it might be for one of the other things you're talking about. Yeah, for Webflow? maybe I got Just it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Just Webflow. Yeah, webflow.com. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can recreate some of our pages here. So let's go over to components. Now they have a list of components already in here. Some of these are not for us, of course. We're like, oh, we didn't create an accordion, so we don't need this. You can just delete it out. But I'm gonna leave all those in. Cool. And then I'm gonna create one of our, let's go to XD real quick, pull this over. And we can try to recreate, perfect. We can try to recreate um, our nav, we can try to recreate just the entire like page here. We can probably do that instead. So you can actually see how to recreate that. So let's try this one out. So as we're here, we can see that we have our welcome Cassandra. You have a little profile picture over there. You have your progress, newbie, mastery, um, a zero and points. So you have like your entire layout here. I usually go in and measure out, okay, we have 20 pixels here. We have 20 pixels to that part. We have about 20 pixels here. Okay, perfect. So whatever I'll need, I'll need to create one div that has padding um, at least 20 pixels around. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Let's create, let's copy this. Who can I click? Okay, let's copy this. Perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna pull in. Now, Webflow has so many different um, tools that we can already use. They have sections, they have containers, they have grids and columns and div blocks. Um, I already said we're gonna use a div, so pull the div right on in there. All right, so now you have a little div. With this div, it's way too wide, of course. So what we're gonna do is go right back to XD and measure how big is our usual iPhone screen. So it already tells us the width is 375. So we're gonna right back over <laughs> and go into our div block. And if you go to the layout, let me see, spacing and sizing. We're gonna open up all these because we're gonna need all of them anyway. So if you look at sizing, it's on auto, which means that it spans across the entire screen. We can just put in 375 right there. Boom, so now you're at 375. We do not have a height. So let's go back. <laughs> Literally, this is what, how I design. I yeah, use great. the actual um, design tool because I still, I'm a designer at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. I'll go right back to my design tool and literally use this for my um, red lining. Remember how we used yeah, to have to yeah. red line? But it's to me so much easier to just do this. <laughs> you know, use your option tools and uh, look at how much spacing is in between things. So yeah, we have 1362 height. So we can put that right in there. 1362. Oh my God, look yeah. at our little. Oh, there you go. It's look long, it. it's but it's, it's in long. there. It's there. Yeah, so the reason why it's long is because I kind of spanned it out. So that's not really a normal iPhone. So if we okay. 
So the one next to it might be The though. one next to it. So we can probably grab that one instead. And that's 812. Nice. All right, uh, let's Le put that Lena in. in the chat saying, I'm definitely going to rewatch the stream series. Yeah, probably <laughs> same. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so now it looks more like an iPhone because at first like I'm iPhone. like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we can do is we can add our, our containers for the different pieces first. Okay. So that's usually what I do. So we can add in another div. And this can be for our status bar. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. This to me still feels like I'm a designer. I am not really coding. Um, but if you look at the actual HTML on the page, it is semantic. It's there. Webflow does an amazing job at you know creating the 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 most accessible way of uh, laying out an actual page. They're not using things as like oh you're gonna use a span for your um, what's it called the status bar. We're gonna use actual div and. It breaks things down better. So I see. I yeah. See. You can go and get this, the height for the status bar. The height is 44. So we'll go ahead on and put in our 44 here. We can keep it at auto for the width. And we can update the name and call it status. Yeah. Go All right. Ahead. So now you have your status bar. Cool. You can fill that in later. But you have it. <laughs> Pull in another div. I see. I see. Got you another, you know, your second div, that will be your header. So now we're creating our containers for our components. So right now this header is, now minus this 44, um, our header is height 265. So we can put in height 265, take away 44. <laughs> and that would be our header. So now we have our status oh, and our header. Yeah. Um, we can put some shadow so we can actually see this thing. Um, so let's do a little shadow. Where is my shadows? Mm -mm -mm. It's called. Could you oh, also shadow. make this on um, so Webflow I see has different screen sizes above? Yes. Okay. So if you go to your, this is the iPad. Mm -hmm. So basically what it's doing is making sure our website is responsive. Mm -hmm. So no matter what screen you're on, you can still mm -hmm. see our little iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, so landscape mode, whatever. this is great for just anybody who is, yes, who is new and wants to see what the process looks like. And mm -hmm. I think the other benefit is you get to see the code afterwards, yes. right? It's all happening simultaneously. Yeah. So, you know, if you are just brand new and have never touched code, Try out a platform like this yeah, alongside so maybe designing. Because um, again, we stray away from code as designers yeah. so much because we're so like scared, you know, freaked out by it. But there's the practicality of knowing it is is amazing. It's yes. it really changes your designs. I think that's pretty been pretty evident with how how you design yeah. um, as well. Exactly. Um, what do you think of me doing some? Um, actual prototyping on yours while, Let's while do you do yours. Yeah. Is there any way we could do a screen share? Yeah, you're up there. That might be cool. Second. Okay. I'm up there. Yeah. Yeah. But we can show yours in the meantime, because what I'm going to do while you're coding is I'm going to do, oh, the true designer thing was to do a, a Make it look, make it look like it works. But you're yeah. gonna actually make it work. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe that's what we'll do during this time. That'll be fun. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna race. I'm just kidding. Please don't race me. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not, we're not racing. I'm gonna work on the, the card pro prototyping first. Perfect. For yours. Right. Nice. Can you? Jack says, can you define custom breakpoints in Webflow? Yes, you can. Um, usually, let me show you. Um, usually, you'll have to go, let's go ahead and publish this so I won't, I won't um, lose it. But if you go into the actual um, settings, so that's usually not in this screen. You have to go to project settings. Mm -hmm. So let's head over there. Cool. So then you can go into your header. I think it's in editor mode. Custom code, custom code. Custom so code. right in the header, you could start like dictating, um, creating your own custom breakpoints right in the style area. Um, I do this all the time. I create 
my own thing everywhere. Um, is Webflow a free tool? Yes, Webflow is free for the very first project. And after that, you'll need to um, pay. <laughs> Can you do similar things in Dreamweaver? Who wow. uses Dreamweaver Who's still? Using Dreamweaver? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, no it's, shame. It's, it's, yeah, no, no shame, definitely not. But how? I love Dreamweaver, <laughs> but I haven't used Dreamweaver in years. Um, but it's the same though. It's still the same type of feel, the same drag and drop. So I'm sure you can. But I don't even know if Dream Reaver is still around. I'm not sure. I don't think it's around. That's yeah, the thing. I'm not sure. So um, you probably should move to Webflow now. All right. That's um, awesome. Back to our designs. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So. We have our um, header here. We we can change this back to uh, the blue color that we already have. Can I still talk? Cause that's how I absolutely. I, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I know you're doing that over there, but I'm like, I I'm just like working to talk. on some uh, prototyping. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely talk. There usually is a little bit of music going on in the background. <laughs> we can't hear it, but yeah, yeah. Dreamweaver is is left in the dreams. Yeah, it's in the dreams. <laughs> Yeah. So, do you have any advice for any of our newer, um, brand new to design? To the design world? To the design world to around. Being a designer. Do you have any <laughs> tips? For, you have a lot of resources on I your. Do. On uh, Lenora has a great website. Um, it would be great to put that up into the, uh, into the chat because it is full of tips and tricks for yes. not just people who code. Yeah. Coders, do you still go by coders? I always feel weird saying coders. I say developers. I feel yeah. like, but it's also different from coders is like general. So it's like yeah, it doesn't everyone. feel right. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> Didn't feel right. Didn't... Back end, front end, SQL, uh, everything. Yeah, coder. <laughs> it's just like lost all credibility there with, for me. It's fine. No, 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 it's fine. I call them coders too. Yeah, um, it's cool. But not just for developers. Not for people who work in code. But also for designers, because yeah. as you as you started in design, you actually started as a teacher. I did, yeah. And then you went into design. Yes. Um, so check out our website. Yeah. If anyone's new, great, great resource. I got to say, not just a really great, solid portfolio. I think just more importantly, a great resource. Yeah. Um, I put those things up because. Yeah, um, why did you? Yeah, because I remember starting out and like really not being able to find anything. Now you have Medium, you have all these different blogs right. up now. So it's like, oh my God, I can find so much. But I started because um, on Instagram, I started talking about, you know, being a designer and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, after a while, people kept asking me the same question over and over. And I'm like, oh my God, all these DMs, I'm so tired of seeing all these things. Really? Yeah, I was really out of frustration. And of, uh, <laughs> hey, you I was know, tired of answering. sometimes that, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I just start putting up different resources. So whenever someone asks me, I'm like, oh, go to my FAQ page or go to whatever resource page I have. And um, yeah, it's the most popular page I have, which is funny. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, people find it useful. It is. I'm using, <laughs> I, I, I've been reading through your, your, your website. Yeah, I, you read my blog earlier. I'm I like, oh, blog. I didn't remember that. <laughs> I wrote blog. that thing. I'm a fan. <laughs> Don't wait for it. Oh my gosh, thank you. So oh, I'm adding like our padding. We're talking about Streamweaver in the chat. You guys, <laughs> we're on XD right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go yes. back to. I am, so I'm prototyping those fun cards. Yes. That's what I'm doing, if anyone's wondering. Maybe you were, maybe you weren't. I cannot wait. So we're gonna see if we can do this. I'm adding in our type in a few, because I have, um, like I'm gonna leave the actual header for later, but, because it has too many icons and profiles, I, I don't even have the access to the icons yet, so. And that's one of the other reasons. Remember we were talking about exporting and naming conventions. Um, right. Yeah, I don't wanna export these right now. So, I'm gonna head on down to this section, because it's just text and pictures. So let's do that. And this one is our H1 tag. No, H2 tag. Mm. All right. So I can go right into our text. Noelle says, I remember when XD was how you showed a smiley face in a text. 
Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Yes, Eric. That is yeah. true. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Did you ever, uh, could you ever, because I'm sure, did you ever have the, uh, do you ever have to do the texting where you text under the table on the keypad? Did you ever do that? Of course. Oh. Especially in high school and Oh my gosh. School. Yeah, of course. Kids, kids these days, <laughs> it's so easy. You just like speak into your phone and yeah. kind of type. We just exactly. have to like hide our phones under the table. But you couldn't really, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me you were a very good student. No. No? Oh. No, not at all, sorry. No, okay. That's probably why I knew all the tricks my kids couldn't fool me. Ah, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, um, I was pretty good though. I didn't get into much trouble, but there was one time, oh my gosh. Oh, so, here we go. I had, it's a new set of friends, right? And I love them, I still love them. I mean, I still talk to them even to this day. But there were, there were some influences on there. Oh. And um, they wanted to go, we had like Denny's in our, do you have Denny's here? Oh yeah. Okay. I love Denny's. So Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Moves over Miami all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Denny's had this um, this special and they're like, oh, free um, pancakes, whatever. So we were in school and my friends were like, oh, we should go. I'm like, all right, never skipped school before, right? Oh so I get in the car. Anyone who's in high school right now, <laughs> turn off the stream <laughs> and go back to class. Yes. Everyone who's out of high school, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Let's talk. Oh my God. So, um, yeah, I went in there and I'm like, oh my God, I'm with my friends. We had to like literally squeeze through a gate to get out. Oh and my God. <laughs> once we got out, this is something else. Oh my God. We were, you know, we got to the Denny's and it's a different kind happy. of stream for sure. <laughs> which I love. <laughs> oh my gosh. And as soon as I pulled up, I saw a car. I'm like, oh wow, that looks like my uncle's car, but I'm not too sure. Oh, Lenora. And I start walking up the actual. <laughs> Jack has it right, Lenora is life goals. <laughs> <laughs> my uncle's like, Nora? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope, that's not So me. I turned around like, take me back to school. <laughs> My mom called me immediately. Uh, Where are you? I'm like, well, you already know, so there's no point in lying. I'm at Denny's. <laughs> I got hungry and I wanted some oh pancakes. She said, like, okay. What's your order at Denny's? <laughs> I didn't even get to order. Oh. I went, yeah, I, went, I was so scared. So my mom was like, all right, go get your Denny's. But if I look at your report card and I see that you're out and you're absent for even one class, Ooh. you know, I'll deal with you then. So I'm talking to my teachers, hey, excuse me. So I wasn't oh here, gosh. but uh, can we lie <laughs> and say I was? Oh my gosh. Thank goodness that was my art teacher, so she loved me. I love that. And I was the art captain at the time, so. She was like, yeah, of course, go ahead, do you, boo-boo. So I loved it. <laughs> and I didn't get in trouble. What is Thank art God. captain? So basically they had like um, these how do I call it? And you went to, you, you're, Lenora's from Florida. Um, She's from joining Florida. us from Florida. Yeah, from Miami. We had, um, this is 14. Um, yeah, so our captain, how do I describe? So in our class, we had like these artists that were just like legit artists. Mm -hmm. And they're like, if someone else needed help, we'll go around and help them. Uh, so I was the captain of my class. Interesting. Um, where I can go around easily just, oh no, you should use this color or, you know. So I kind of like drive a lot of things. I kind of love that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, look what I made. Uh-oh. Can you see, can you see my screen? Yes. <gasps> wow. You know what the tricky part is with your cards? <laughs> There's a lot of tutorials out there with, um, Howard Pinsky's done a bunch of tutorials with cards. Like actually flipping from card to card, oh but your God. your designs yeah. has cards stacked on each other. Yes. So when to prototyping, it... it's it's important to remember like you can pull that that card beneath. Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. So fun, huh? I love it. So what I basically did for everyone who's kind of wondering, it's a little bit different than how we normally would. Um, because again, it's like a stacked. If you go to yeah. her original designs, it's stacked on top of each other. Yeah. So like yeah. you can see they're stacked on top of each other. I accept the changes. <laughs> um, but what we want to do what what I assumed we wanted to do because they're cards is to flip through yeah. them, flick through them, right? Kind yes. of like a 
I like flashcards. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's what we did here. I love it. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm using the drag trigger and I'm pulling. And what I've also done is I've had um, the component of this card, the following card, mm. directly below it. So that when you pull, you're pulling, you're doing a drag trigger to the next artboard. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. It was so funny because like when I was thinking about this, and that's the great part about like passing off your designs to someone. Yes, yes. Because they interpret it different. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of like a piece of the card kind of like going off to the side and then coming back and snapping on top of the other. And now I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh no, this is better. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Change my perspective. It's interesting. Let's take I mean, that one. <laughs> it's, it's just another, just a, just a yeah. way to do it, right? Yeah. So yeah. I what I it. do for typically for these types is the thing is when you drag to the other screen, for it to flow smoothly, the mm -hmm. item that you want dragged out of screen kind of has to be still be in the yeah. next artboard. So that's what these guys are here. And if I put up the opacity, what I've done mm -hmm. is I've included on this first artboard the next component for the next one. Yeah. So, which is fun. And I've done the same thing on, and I've just lowered the opacity and the opacity kind of like fades out. And then for this one, I've done the same thing. Wow. So that's basically it. But the tricky part here is to remember these card stacks, which I think was a fun challenge. I was like, <laughs> I can do something with these. Um, so yeah, that's your, that's a prototype. I can, f I'll, I'll, I'll finish these up All and right. I'll keep working on them. That is And we can go back to screen sharing while you're, while you're kind of doing your thing. Yeah. And then at the, and then I'll bring them into your, your XD <sighs> file. Cause I actually am on her current XD file. We're using the collab tool. So I'm up, I'm up on, on her screen. She's up on my screen. <laughs> And she's also coding in the meantime. I'm just saying we're doing the most. We yeah. We're doing the most and This is normal though on my team. This is normal? Yeah. This is normal, yeah. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. I've definitely done some uh yeah. hair designing. How are you Very doing, fun. chat? How's everyone doing? We've got about twenty two minutes, y'all. Twenty two yeah. minutes until the design feedback countdown stops. And you will be able to get some amazing feedback from me and Lenora. Yes. So I'm hoping that you're gonna take us up on that offer. And uh, today's today's challenge was pretty fun. Let's look at it really quick. Today's challenge was auto animate, so that's perfect. Oh yes. It's almost like I planned this. Yeah. <laughs> so today's challenge is all about auto animate. I just did a little drag trigger fun auto animate for you guys. Hopefully we can see some of yours. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. Yeah, I probably should do my thing too, because I'll talk forever <laughs> if you let me. We do. We want that. <laughs> we love that. I'll talk forever. No, but that is amazing. I well, love that's it. the thing is that it's kind of, but it's coming from your designs, which you made intentionally to be very modular. We're playing with cards here. Yes. So super easy. See, you make me happy. <laughs> it will be a perfect Thank designer you. developer Thank duo. You. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Greatest collab moment there. Thank oh you, my gosh. Susanna. Thank you. <laughs> We're also going to start singing in 20 minutes. I'm Which one? Which song? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I got very nervous. Also. My hands are sweaty. <laughs> A true I'm collab. Ready. Oh my gosh. True, true collab. So when did you get into design? From being a teacher, like I don't oh think gosh. we have that part of your story. Yeah, yet. I probably didn't talk about that. Um, so right after, probably, it was that summer I was supposed to go back to teaching, but instead I went to a coding boot camp. Ah. And then when it was August time, I was like, all right, come back to teaching. I'm like, oh, so. Uh, so you just went to a coding boot camp to try it out. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, if you know, because I had two choices. I really wanted to either go to um, get my second bachelor's mm -hmm. at Georgia's Tech. What is your first bachelor's? It's in, it's in it's psychology. psychology. So it's called Family, Youth, and Community Sciences. Okay. Basically, you touch awesome. on almost everything, every aspect of community, but understanding it from more of a, how can we help you and create services around that? Got it. To make the community better. Understood. Um, which to me is the same thing I do with tech because I'm making the community of tech better by creating developer tools. <laughs> You know, creating an awesome ecosystem for anyone who's, you know, 
needing our system. So I think it's the same exact, like I literally use the same tactics. Wow. Um, yeah, where I'm at, so. I mean, community making and community involvement, yeah. just like, you know, in Adobe Live is a community in itself and yeah. there's a lot of moving parts that we don't see, that yeah. you guys don't see, <laughs> but you guys are definitely a part of. Um, it's pretty awesome. I love the dual screen. I know. It is fun. I love I it. I saw um, my buddy Julian, who you guys have seen, I'm sure. He's uh, been a host and a guest, and you think he's gonna be doing a creative challenge pretty soon. Um, he was doing a split duo screen with one of his guests, and I was like, I gotta do that. That <laughs> looks like fun. <laughs> hmm. 20. This is hilarious because um, this is literally how I created my portfolio. Oh, I know. Mm. I had like my screens up and literally going back and forth like oh how much padding did I put oh no that's too much let me change it let me look at the padding between this I don't want that I want to drag one. to the next screen it's awesome this one's one yeah cool and now I can pull in the pictures let me pull in some of these pictures it's all happening yes oh Eric says I love being part of this community Aww. And we all started crying. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Look at how I just dragged and dropped that. Oh my God, that was easy. Justine said, I know so many people who started with a background in science and moved into development or design. Science, really? yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's yeah kind of psychology, it's a soft science. Oh, it's a science. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, all in the same. I mean, cognitive science is probably one of the biggest yes. elements of interaction design. Yeah. I had a about, lot of people are going back at their masters yeah. and, um, in that. I had almost like six courses in cognitive and oh my gosh. Do you feel like you use it? Do you feel, all you the gotta time. use, I mean, yeah. I, I, I use, it's all about what do your user feel? Exactly. Where would you like to be? Why would, what's the motivation? Yes, I use it literally all the time. So if anyone is learning on their own how to be a designer or developer, or developer, designer, yeah. either or, um, and you're taking mostly like tutorials online for like design and you're trying out new things, make sure to add in a CogSci yeah. element. So, yes. You know, find a free course online, there's so many, but like add that mm -hmm. in if you're learning by yourself. Yeah. Um, that's one good part about like going to school for yeah. it or going to a boot camp for it or. I think I have that resource. <laughs> I think so, cause it's free. And if anyone like wants to tackle that, Here's like so many different free courses here. Oh, this is social psychology. Okay, never mind. I thought I was gonna look for, yeah, I thought I had some cognitive in here. But yeah, there's mm -hmm. so many free resources on like um, EDX and Udacity about cognitive and Coursera. Oh my God, they have so many. So yeah, anyone ever wants to learn that? Oh man, that is, it's such a crucial part of it. Yeah, it really is. Nice, nice. nice. Yeah, everyone has a different background getting into this space. Yeah. I say like, it's really rare for me to see and meet somebody who has been a, well, UX designer, I guess <laughs> since I knew they wanted to be one. I guess now that it's evolving more into a field, it's been around for like more yeah. than, maybe it made it's around for like a decade plus, but like yeah. I didn't on, know. under different names. Yeah, it's definitely Maybe there's more names. of that, but. Um, Susanna says, my degrees are in bio and molecular bio. Ooh. Wow. And we were writing awesome. programs to analyze DNA. <gasps> wow. And you're here. That is awesome. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not incomprehensible. No. <laughs> yeah. Chad, if you have any backgrounds that you never thought would bring you into design oh. or development, please let us know. I would love to hear them. I wanted to be a photographer. Really? Yeah. See, I could see that. I could oh, definitely see you. that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what that means, but I love it. Your glasses. Oh. It's circular. And most of the time when I see someone with like circling glasses, <laughs> psychology in here. Oh. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah, when it's circular, it's kind of like creative. It's like a creative oh, mind that picks circles. So, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, the yeah. one that you implement is. Yes, that's Webflow. When you're, that is. That is Webflow over there. Yeah. Justin used to be a theater major, and that is awesome. I love that. Instead of this, I'm gonna use a grid. 
Amazing. Grid. Grid is like literally another way of kind of doing the same repeat, repeat I can't talk, repeat grid. Um, that's an XD, but it's more of a code way of doing it. So all I gotta do is just um, make my grid and then pull this right on in, drag it in, boom. All right, so now I get to copy it in this square, like the cell. All right, and then I can fix up the, um, pow, pow. gutter. All right. It's amazing how this is coming to life. <laughs> I love it. Um, Eric said I started as a traditional artist. Ooh, yes. I used to earn money drawing people's faces. Yes. That's fun. That's so cool. Yeah. I have a few like oil paintings as well. I haven't done it in a while though, so don't don't look at my stuff. <laughs> Got <laughs> it anymore. Oh man. I'm having some moments with prototyping, but <laughs> I knew these cards would be the death, death of me. I knew it. <laughs> I'm glad I gave so you a said, said she immediately took off her the took off her glasses <laughs> to see if the lenses are round. Are they? Are they? Is it a thing? The re more round your lenses are, the more creative you are? I've noticed that. Mine are like slightly round. I guess that makes sense. I, I guess. I guess. Rob trained dolphins. <gasps> wow. Okay. Okay. So we have all types of people in this show. I love that. <laughs> oh my God. That's that fun. That is awesome. Trained dolphins. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got 17 pixels in between. We need 20 pixels in between, because that's what XD told us. Yeah, 20. Okay. What in the world? This. These cards. <laughs> I can't wait, because then I'm going to be able to learn that, how to create those cards. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we can remove this row because we don't need that yet. All right. And let's see. Somewhere, a hard, somewhere Howard Pinsky is screaming at me in his Howard Pinsky-like way. He's like, do this, do this, but it's, it's a lot more subdued. Like, you should do this. Oh my gosh. I cannot. No. The gurus out there, if the gurus were watching, they'd have something yeah. to say about my prototyping. On Twitter. But like prototyping has always been like slapdash. You gotta yeah. just kind of make it work, and that's my favorite part about yes. prototyping. Yes. Okay. See how much padding is in between this. Thirty. All right. Candace has uh, rounded glasses. Okay. See. Here we go. It might become a. Th it's. I think it's a thing. It's a thing. Okay. I'm telling you. The rounder your lenses are, the more creative. Yeah. So the my more head. harsh it is, the more yeah. like what like. Maybe. Scientific? No. Uh, not, just not creative. Not creative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've met some people like that, I know, yeah. I have a little roundness, so that means I'm in between, which I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to keep an eye out for people who have like really hard I will never lines, talk to them. and I'll be like, oh, what do you do? <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. So y'all, we got about 10 minutes until the design feedback starts. Mm -hmm. I am very excited and hoping to see a lot of daily creative challenges. Noelle, round glasses. Here we go. See? <laughs> oh, the round is in my box. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, if you don't need glasses and you don't have glasses, yeah. we get it. I but mean, if you, I don't if you had them. to pick a pair of glasses. Yeah, because mine is really for the blue light. I don't like to stare at my screen long because I don't want to mess up my eyes. So. Oh my gosh, blue light, blue blocker, blue yes. blocker glasses, everything. Needed. Yep. Let's make that everything gradient. Everything in this day and age. Yes, because you're going to be staring at these screens for the rest of your life. All right, let me see if I, here, here's a gradient. Oh, I don't want to do gradient on this whole thing. Just this, okay. Gradient. This is literally a design tool. I just feel like this is so easy to do for anyone. 
anyone wanting to do design on the web. All right, let's use this color. Vanier started as a data analysis and then computer electronics, then biz dev. Mm, everything. Computer pairing, and now a graphic UX designer and front end developer. That is awesome. That is quite a journey. Wow. Oh my god. That literally means they could fit anywhere in a company because they're gonna need all of that. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. That's awesome. I love it. Let's make our angle. And then how high? Uh, 144. All right, so we gotta do. So anyone who's just joining, who hey, maybe you are, maybe you're not. <laughs> But anyone who has just come in, um, what's happening right now is we're seeing a little bit of what happens when you bring your designs into a program like Webflow. Yeah. And actually take the time and create it, mm -hmm. actually create it, a working version. Um, and what that means is actually creating different different elements in a different space, but using yeah. your designs as your guide. Because mm -hmm. that's essentially what design uh, developers are doing. They're using your designs, your design templates, your design yeah. systems, your notes, and they're recreating it. Yes. You know, it's not, it doesn't just magically go from like XD to like an iPhone and then like start working. <laughs> I think a lot of people have that as a misconception when yeah. you start out. Yeah. Um, it it's not how it works. Nope. It's a lot of time on the developer's end to actually like go through your designs, read out how, what the spacings are, what the colors are, what the font yeah. weights are, what the images are, I mean, yes. and they're redoing it all. So the more complicated you make your design, the more well, work you like... give your developer. Yep. And a lot of them are designers. <laughs> Lenora's a designer as well. Yeah. But what's really happening is you're, I think the, the takeaway here is learn what your developer does so you can design in a way that makes your, your processes, yes. processes, process. <laughs> streamlined yes. and easier for both. Because then you have something that works and looks exactly how you designed it. Exactly. And yeah. that's rare. <laughs> that is. It's super rare. I mean, that I mean, is. not to not to kind of like oh, no, dampen the mood yeah. here, but like I've given um, some front end developers work and it does not come back the same way. <laughs> it does look very different. Yes, <laughs> I am sure. Just slightly, just enough to notice. Yeah. For a designer to know, not, not maybe in a huge way, but let me export this, because I'm going to need this little character. How do I export in XD? Because I never need to ever export. Uh, Learn it. Yeah, now I'm going to figure it out. We, oh, have, export. A, we have a linguistics major. Nice. Oh, wow. Maybe you can help with all this copy. Yes, please. I need help with the copy. Oh my gosh, and then Fears is a flight attendant. Didn't read that. <laughs> wow. That's cool. That is. That is very cool. Perfect. I must stop learning. I used to plant trees. What? Oh, I did, so you know how you did City Year? I did AmeriCorps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For a little bit. And I Twins. worked at a nonprofit that planted trees. That is amazing. Yeah. I would have loved that. Did you like travel to do it? No, no, okay. we did it in like the community I grew yeah. up in, which was great. That's awesome, yeah. But everyone has, has had the fun jobs, fun <laughs> weird jobs. Yes. All right, how old was this? 92. All right, so now we have a little square for our uh, mascot. So we're gonna plop him in there and go into when your 2020 goal is to be a startup CEO. Yes, right, do now. it. Okay. 2020, big year. Yes. Any advice? Whew. Um, CEO? Well, I've never been a CEO before. <laughs> so. Startup CEO. So I don't know. Um, but whatever you do, make sure that I'm gonna say something that my um, first boss ever told me. Mm -hmm. He said, never pick, never choose someone based on um, 
you know, that resume or whatever they, they've written up about themselves, choose them based on how, um, how it, I, how, how would I call it? How um, passionate they are about things. If they show some type of passion about something, then you know they're gonna show passion about their work, what they do. Mm. And he told me, yeah, you don't have any skills. Yeah, you don't know Photoshop or you don't know UX because that was my very first job. He said, but I see your passion mm. and you literally will spend all night trying to figure something out. I hired you because of that. Wow. And literally, I think that's what everyone has said so far at every job, like I hired you because I see your passion. I see you up at the wee hours of the night on Instagram talking about, so I'm trying to do this thing and I can't figure it out. And then in the morning I'm like, I figured it out. So they, yeah, I've been hired because of my passion a lot. I yeah, I think that's that's amazing. That's amazing <laughs> yeah. and beautiful and I love it. Yeah. Um, and it's so true, Yeah. right? You know, you wanna work with people who are a co this question comes up a lot on the chat. Yeah. Usually it's like, how do I find a job in UX? Yeah, um, that's true. Be, be willing to learn. Yeah. Be willing to, and then get excited about what you're learning. Yes. I think that's it. And I think that just goes for every type of field. Yeah. And then, you know, also like getting comfortable talking about whatever you're learning. Um, right. Right. A lot of people, they're not comfortable talking about it. So when they're in those interviews, like, so, uh, what, what do you like your, about UX or whatever? And you're what's like, your process? Uh. <laughs> yep. Can you talk about process? Can you? Yeah. Like, yes. It was funny because like for my job, of course, I didn't know UX at the time. So he's like, so what are you passionate about? So I start bringing up all this art stuff and I'm like, oh, here's my art. And this is the process of how I like create my art. And I was talking about something totally different. He's like, hired. I'm like, how? I mean, I'm talking about something else. He's like, you have a structure. You have organ mm. like you've organized how you create things. I already know once you get into Photoshop and learn it, <laughs> you'll be there in no time. Go ahead. You've earned the job. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he was an amazing boss. Like, honestly, he was. Taught me a lot. So I just realized something about your prototype that uh -oh. I should have remembered. What? No, no, not in a bad thing. Okay. In a way that it's, these are, this is a tap action. Oh, oh yeah. Not a drag action. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah. That's but thank it. goodness for XD, because it just, you can just go to the drop down and press tap. Instead. Exactly, I just <laughs> forgot. Yeah. And I don't want to animate. <clears throat> very cool. Yes. All right, we're at two minutes. Two minutes, Ooh. design feedback, it's happening. It's All real. Right. I see in, be in Discord, not Behance, you guys have added some things and I'm excited. And I'm really proud. I'm happy too. I'm excited and I'm proud. <laughs> and even Jesse's like, these designs are amazing. <laughs> we'll re-up what, what we were doing again. And then we'll uh, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up on your, on your third day with us. Ooh, I'm which so been, sad. Which has been only. I've been able to show you all so much in a short period of time. All right. Let me finish up this piece then. And I'm going to make this into. I think I need to change it to flex. Yeah, let's change it to flex. Change this piece to flex. And then we're gonna measure this here. Zoe says, I uh, wasn't comfortable to talk about my learning process because I'm learning on my own. I don't feel confident in myself at all. Yeah. But people I talked with actually love the learning journey. Yes, it's yeah. true. Yes. I think it's, th I mean, that's the best, that is one of the strongest things you can bring, to, you could learn yeah. as a designer is how to talk about not just yourself. It's great to talk about yourself, yeah. and, you know, be like, I, I am this person. Talk about your process and all you can, yeah. and all that means is start documenting your process. Start realizing that you need a process. I think some people don't have process and they're just like, I can make that. I can do that. I can. And it's great and you can, but yeah. over time, over time, we're looking for we're looking at longevity, and employers exactly. are looking for longevity in your process. Yeah. They want to be able to see that you can do this, but you, and that's great. But yeah. we, you want to be able to do this again and again yep. and again and again, and with a developer, yeah, and with five developers, and with two other designers who don't think your designs look good at all. <laughs> oh my gosh! So true, right? Yeah. Is that a slight trigger? Because it is do. for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My, yeah, my design been beat up quite a bit sometimes. Oh, like, I think oh all of gosh. us, all of us. 
Speaking of designs and feedback, not being beat up, the timer <laughs> is up, you guys. We are here. Let's check out some creative challenges. Okay. This is day two. We're looking at day two. There's a lot from day two. So yesterday's challenge, which was all about, if we look over, components. Ooh. So we're gonna check out our components, and if some of you guys have today's challenge, which is all about auto-animate, throw them in there. We'll double check and make sure we didn't miss them, but for the most part, I see mostly components, so let's look at those. Um, awesome, and I think the prompt was all around a like fitness app, too. Okay. So that's fun. Cool, Ooh, some this is awesome. Some undrawn there, some illustrations. Give us the feels. Ooh, this is in another language. This is even better. Yeah. Locality. <laughs> Okay, some initial vibes. <laughs> I can see the component usage on yeah. the, you know, here we go, we have, we're working in this kind of like modular squares. Yeah. Here's where the information's gonna lie, space. Yeah. So maybe you used components for all of these. Yeah. Maybe your buttons are a set of components. Mm -hmm. Maybe your... Like your nav area? Yeah, your nav area. Yeah. I do like that you've styled it and used a mock-up. Yes. It's just hard for me to see. Not just not just because I'm on a screen, but just because if you want someone to critique your work in this type of setting and the yeah. screen, not just the full case study, yeah. you know, it might be good to give us one just just a normal one. That's the one that's the one feedback here. I love your use of colors though. That's been oh, great. Yeah. Great job there. Yeah. Um you have a little bit of like an undraw mm -hmm. um in the accent paint like the accent colors that stick out. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. The CTA stands out amongst everything, mm -hmm. which is great. Very cool. It's hard to visualize data well and in an interesting way. Yeah. I think this does really a great job. Yeah. Some things that are way more important to focus on, mm -hmm. some playing with monochromatic scales yeah. to kind of be like, oh yeah, these aren't maybe as important to notice. Yeah. Great job. Cool. Love it. Love it, love it. Let's check E out. Ooh, mini design system over there. Telling us the fonts and the colors. Yeah, let's Love talk it. about it. All right. All right, cool. Day two. Font is poppins. Everyone oh loves that gosh. font. I've never used that font yet, mm. but I it's need to. It's a big to. one. Like it's a big it. one for yeah. the design challenges. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk components. Let's talk yes. visualization of data. I love how the illustrations, I honestly looked at the illustrations before I looked at the text, so it told me what I was looking at mm. before I even looked at the text. Yep, yep. So I like that, I'm like, oh, that person's playing volleyball, and I look over to the left, and I'm like, oh, volleyball, yeah, this is what I'm looking at. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> example of how illustrations are yeah. super helpful in visualizing what you need. Yes. Um, yeah. I think well, we have some spacing see. and some text. Um, yeah. We could probably look at a little deeper. Um, maybe yes. kind of going into your typography strategy here. Maybe using a font that has this, you know, it's maybe it's the line weight's a little smaller. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's bold on bold on bold. It's like, this is important, this is important, yeah, this is important, is important, this is important. And I'm like, oh my God, it's also important. Yeah. And I do want to look at it all. Yeah. But um, it probably would help my eye to um, navigate, not just navigate, but also like read accordingly. Yeah. And also feel like, um, Kind of like here, like down here, right? Yeah, we have like that a is good. Like we're yeah. in lowercase. Maybe we're using a, a smaller uh, a smaller weight. Um, yeah. We're working with color and space and size. Yeah. I think these are great down here. Oh yeah, definitely. Cool. I would say definitely watch um, like your font sizing because mm. it looks like it's for mobile. Um, so some of those look like it's like eleven oh, yeah. or twelve pixel font. Um, the, small. Yeah, that's very small. Mm. 16 is like the lowest you can go. Um, and if you do go a little bit lower, make sure it's like um, like labels or like some kind of um, caption. But right now, the information you're giving is very, very important and I wanna know, but I can't really see it. So I would say bump those fonts up some. Words to live by. Yeah. Great. Thank you, though. And I'm, we're, we absolutely adore your, the illustrations you're using. Because those <laughs> yes. are fun. Yeah. Those are fun and engaging. Love it. Both. Awesome. Let me just double check the creative challenge one more time to see if we're mismaking sure we touch upon everything. Yeah. 
Are we doing auto animate today though? Yes, there's just not a lot of submissions. Okay, okay, okay. So components. Okay. Uh, right. Leverage the power of components. Reuse elements. Right. Cool. Doing great. And we definitely saw those in all of these. I think everyone's mm -hmm. using them, compo the components and reusing elements very well. I yeah. think it's a great example, good uh, practice. Yeah. So go back if you haven't done this one, because this is great. Yeah. Um, this is great. Yeah, I like the colors. Very hip. Yeah. Very hip colors. Very awesome. fun font. We love your design system at the bottom, your mini <laughs> case study. Yes. It, it uh, does this feel really long? No, it's just the, um, it's just the screen. Yeah. Um, okay. See. So I'm loving the shadow use. Yeah. I don't know if it's me or they're using it correctly. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's good. I love the shadows and I like, you know, because it makes me feel like that's more of a dark mode or something mm. for that particular modal. Well, card. Because this card? is kind of like a card. Card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like practicing how to make more darker layouts versus the more lighter layouts is to me an amazing trick to start practicing because dark mode is definitely in now. So in. Yeah, so I love that this is here. Um, yes, I think the only thing, the only thing would be, and I, and I, love, the, I love the colors you're using, but they're very, um, I think you could stick with either the pink mm. or the yellow or if having both. Keeping one as your indicator yeah. and one as your um, primary. Primary, yeah. yeah. So maybe I'm trying to think. I'm like, maybe it's this. Maybe it's the pink's the primary. Then I'm like, yeah. no, there's no way. It's over here. <laughs> so primary versus indicator versus you know, yeah. trying out trying out one or the other. But there is a lot of a lot of color usage. Yeah. So I think you could just kind of. Yeah. Tighten up. We talked about that yesterday, mm -hmm. like just basically picking one primary color and maybe two accents. Yeah. Um, but not too many. And then some, like most of them need to at least complement each other mm. and not be too far off of how that one looks. So true. Yeah. But very cool. Very cool idea. Yeah, and I'm this loving good. this little like, this little like, <laughs> pick up this yes. little, this little uh, module. It's cute. Um, cool. And great use of our favorite thing, the uh, shadow. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Oh, look at the gym. <laughs> oh, cool. wow. This is very detailed. Oh, yeah. This is good. Okay. Okay. Cool. Words. I would, yeah. yeah, I would definitely say um, right along with the way we were already describing, some of these elements are kind of small. Mm -hmm. So I would just bump up some things, yeah. but I love like the way the colors are. I think they complement each other. So like that green and then that teal, um, they're different enough so you can tell the difference. Well, you're using them together as one in each different yeah, components, right? Exactly. In each different card, you have a set color. color. Yeah. We get that. I get yeah. that from, from your. Yeah. From your screen. Very um, small though, yeah. a lot of these elements. You're absolutely right. Really tiny. Like this is if this is on a phone, it's like I mean I can barely see it on the screen. Yeah. And the phone yeah. is so tiny. So some of these lines down yeah. here. Too tiny. Yeah. Some of this text. Too tiny. Oh yeah. Way too tiny. Yeah, that one's really, really small. Very, very small. So yeah. these numbers I can read, but yeah. But you know, running, eh. Yeah. And not only that, your 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 icons are pretty small too. So yeah. bumping them up. Don't be afraid of size and playing around with space. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's got. It should be a phone. We have this. Yeah, a little hamburger. Right? A little hamburger. Little little um, yeah. icon in the corner. Maybe it's, it's a, for a. Uh, maybe it's not for an know. iPhone. Based on the bottom. You know what? It kind of like looks like some kind of material design going on mm -hmm. here. Yeah. I was thinking about um, like even for like the run icon, the food icon, mm -hmm. the walking icon, because it's on that white background, it's mm -hmm. almost a little bit hard to see. Mm -hmm. um, so like, don't be um, afraid to play with shapes behind your icons to make them stand out more. Um, that probably would have taken this a long way, just having some kind of shape behind the icon so you can actually see. Yeah. Interesting though, really great. And you're definitely yeah. reusing these components. Thumbs up, it. thumbs yeah. up you did it. Uh, okay, fitness app. Some of these case studies are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are we? Who are we? Designers? Oh, are we designers? Yes, Guys, I wasn't this good when I started. <laughs> For real. This is amazing. 
What a case study. Yeah. Alrighty, so it seems like you've, actually what's great is that you've pulled out your components mm, <laughs> that yeah. you're using and re reusing. So, awesome. um, so that's been really fun. Hey. Yes. Oh, you're talking about design system. There's uh -oh. a mini design system for you. Yeah, this is great. They're just taking it all in. Great, here we go. Another good use case of color. One, two, yes. three, four. We have four pretty intense colors. Yeah. All used not necessarily for either as an indicator mm -hmm. nor a primary. Yeah. So what do we think of that? I think it works with the cards. I was about to say, because she's, well, I don't know if it's she or he, but it's, well, they, but I don't know if, yeah, I don't, I don't know the primary or secondary color, but it's, like, contained. Maybe this pink. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm, I'm assuming it's yeah, the pink. Yeah, because, yeah, the tab area. Yeah. But it's all contained in its area, so it works together. It's exciting to look at for sure. I, th yeah. I would think if you had more components, how these colors would affect. So it, it may behoove you to try out a couple different screens yeah. using these components on those other screens. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less, um, and how that would look and maybe bringing it down, parsing it down color-wise. Yeah. Love your iconography. Love that you're using the same set. Yes. Cool. This is great. Yeah, I like it. The only thing yeah. that I'll probably say is um, the tab area. The uh, I guess I guess is that a tab area? Yeah. Um, you know, for fingers, I can almost assume that I'm probably gonna miss that. I feel like it's a swipe up. Oh, but, but okay. it might not be. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. It is really pretty thin if it's just a bottom yeah. nav. But if it's something maybe that you take action with, yeah. that's probably appropriate size. So designer, what do you want your design to do? Yeah. All right. And that's why we prototype cool. as well. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Ooh, that's the day one. We actually saw that one, I think. This is day two. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, look at this. Okay. Cool. It's an interesting mock-up. Yeah. It's kind of a squid. Is that normal? What? It's a very stylized mock-up of the phone. Who, oh. doesn't, who doesn't love that? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, okay. Fitness goals. Here we go, components. And here we go, some Excel-looking spreadsheets. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I like the colors. Mm. They definitely Is this on together. an iPad? All right. Thank you for that. Yeah, appreciate it's it. Amazing, it's responsiveness. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about these um, shadows being green, slightly green? I don't mind them. Okay. To be honest, um, I think it's yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it looks great. Um, you know, if we're using you used components, proud of you. They look great. Yeah. We can see that here. But when we get down to the nitty gritty of what's in those components, yeah. I think we have a little bit of work to do. Oh yeah, small text. Um, it's it's some information that probably I don't know may not be okay with being in a card. I, I would kind of want this to be because um, it's a lot on one screen. Right. So I'm right. like, oh. so if this is supposed to be a card that maybe you tap into to then bring yeah. you to daily progress. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's fine, but maybe, not, not maybe, having that, um, this kind of, this scale, yeah. maybe this is supposed to live in the next page, mm, right? Because yeah. this is really detailed information yes. about some, something. So having being, we need like an over, an overarching, you yeah. need like a title about what this yeah. is. Um, yeah. And same for this, these are very small bits of information yeah. condensed in a very small spaces. So also these components, they don't have to be like small. Yeah. They could be like the whole page. Yes. You know, and maybe you're flipping through them, maybe yeah. you're scrolling through them. Yeah. Maybe you tap into them. Um, so maybe some, like I said, data visualization, really hard to do. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, you know, there are some people that can do it really, really well and some yeah. people that 
for the rest of us, it's hard to visualize yeah, all this type of data. Especially on mobile. Especially so on mobile, very small screen. Yeah. So go back into that. This maybe is material design. Yeah. On an iPhone. So Those are consistent, the actual icons at the bottom. They have the same thickness. They are, yeah, but is it, actually, here we go. How do you feel about, if you were to get this, mm -hmm. what would be your first kind of word of warning to your designer as a developer? If you were to get something like this, um, in regards to like space. Yeah, like they're like, here, I want you to make that. Like here, yeah. you're my dev, here, I'm a new designer. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely, you know, we already kind of talked about it, but just like the font sizes is very, very small. So I'll be kind of like, to me, I would question that mostly. Yeah, I would um, think you would be like, on them for this the oh, spacing. Oh, the navigation area? Well, the nav and like the actual spacing and like the safe areas here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Usually, when mm. you're designing for um, iPhone X, you never really get a centered um, title. Yeah. It's always to the left. Mm. Um, and it's never just by itself like that. Usually, um, it has like an actual navigation. Mm -hmm. um, so I would kind of expect that. Yeah, bring in bring in some of the actual um, standardizations. Bring yeah. in the, bring in the nav, bring in, bring in like all of the things that should be up here. We're yeah. talking time, we're talking Wi-Fi, bring them all in, so to help yeah. you see. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's do a couple more. Ooh, there's a lot of data viz stuff, which wow. is, I commend you. Yes. Talk about a mock-up, hello. <laughs> huh. Here we go, there we go. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. So the oh. Component, oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, we're done. <laughs> All right. We are. We're done with those. Um, uh, why don't we kind of wrap up everything yes. that you've done for the week or the past three days and kind of let us know what's going on and how to do that. Going. All right. Um, so, yeah, this isn't done, but um, I was kind of creating this area here, which is our learning module um, card that we have. So it's kind of going through creating how that layout would look. So yeah, I have created the design system. I created the actual layout and I started go right over here into our um, live design system mm -hmm. and started you know laying out our actual components. And from there, all you'll have to do is you know, go into our actual component library in here and create the actual components itself. So once you go into like our, let me see where the area is that I'm looking for. Usually they call it components here too. Like you can see here, um, when you see like the little green mm -hmm. um, indicator, that's usually a component. Mm. And you can literally just drag it in. So I'll test out one just to show you. Let me see here. So here's where all of our, they call it symbols, which we all used to call components symbols. Mm -hmm. um, but you can drag in all the different instances. So if let's say I'm looking for a form, I can just drag that in, let's put it here, and then it pops in a form. So this is like our component library, and I can go through, I'm gonna take this away, just mm -hmm. so it won't be in there. But I can create these little components. So whenever someone needs to um, quickly flesh out a layout, they have their component library already in the symbols section right, of um, right. Webflow. Cool, so Webflow, yeah. now we know. Yeah. Now we know, kind of like this little bit of a background into what the what happens to your design after you hand them over yeah. to a dev. Yeah. Um, it'd be great. Can you show us um, like everything you've kind of worked on for the yeah. three days? And oh, yes. Let us know what Let's zoom out. Is. <laughs> Let's zoom out. So. We started here. I don't know who remembers, but this was the only thing we had <laughs> was up there. Ages ago. <laughs> yeah. We had this little uh, wireframe design system over here in the corner. And, you know, I started off with this splash screen. Like, I don't know what logo we we're going to use, but hey, let's make a circle. Mm -hmm. um, let's call it Sprout. And um, let's create a little quiz. And our quiz will go into a little camera. And it's like very bare bone wireframing. Some of the spacing isn't all the way great. However, you get a idea of how this, um, you know, 
plant app would work. And you have your um, design system. Well, I guess your, your dashboard here. I kind of messed this up, but don't look at that. <laughs> and um, you have your entire layout here. Mm -hmm. Then I went into creating high fidelity mockups and animations and you know how could I make this come more to life and I started creating our little mascot and bring our mascots in creating our quiz in a better um, more modern way and um, still kept that same feel that I've had before in the wireframes have made it a lot more livelier um, and then from there, I decided, okay, what am I reusing over and over and over? What have I created in groups? If I've created a group of something and I've used it more than two or three times, that needs to be an actual component. So then I went over to our design system and I laid out, you know, how our colors would be, how our typography would be. I chose our typography, I chose our buttons, and I used state to dictate whether it's gonna be a primary button or a secondary or tertiary or whatever. I kind of like created our state here um, to really drive the point home and use it within our component library, which is here. And here's all of our different components, our headers, our, um, you know, the way we water our application, but using it in more of a card setting, our steppers, our um, drawers that go up if you, you know, flick it or whatever. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And even here, we're kind of like creating a little quiz component here where I can just literally go in and just change up our button right um, from our library. But yeah, um, I've just kind of like created how our design system, like the initial design system could be laid out. Of course, they can look a lot better than this. But um, yeah, this is like the start to how we can like lay out um, our different design components and the different pieces of how um, our design system would work at the end of the day. This is awesome. So, yeah. This is awesome, and you actually you even like um, titled them atom molecule. We even yeah. like we even we even went back to a really really interesting way of of actually organizing a design system yeah. from all the way down from your smallest element yeah. to something re way larger. Like yeah. not only what this Pieces. does, but also how it works with each other. Yeah. Um, are you gonna are you gonna put this up on Behance? I need to. I want to clean it up some. But so you, anyone but, can play with it. Great. Oh, yeah, awesome. So, so we'll be able to see it on Behance. Yes. That's great. That's Definitely. great. Even this little guy. Even our cute little <laughs> our cute little guy. And plants. He really meant yeah. a lot. Um, but thanks a lot for coming through. Did you have fun? I did. This was amazing. Oh, good. I loved it. Good, good, good. Yeah. And I hope everyone at uh, home enjoyed watching and learning. If you need her, why don't you pull up your website really quick? Cool. Let's do it. If you need anything, yes. literally anything, and you're just starting, check out Lenora's website. Yes, I have my Find her on all her socials. She's awesome. She works to just make sure everybody has the knowledge they need to yeah. do a great job. And you can tell from her design systems that she is knows what she's doing. Yeah. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I had a blast. I hope everyone in the chat had a blast. It's three <laughs> days of fun and good yes. time. I can't wait to maybe collab again with you yeah. soon. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but thanks for joining us, you guys, after this yeah. during this three day awesome stream. Yes. And I uh, hope you. everyone has a good, what are we, Thursday? Yeah. Hope everyone has a good Thursday and have bye. a good weekend. <laughs> it was great. We'll see you later. Hey.